I realize this metaphor might not have gone over as well with the first video. But in the last video, we discussed Yellow from Baroness's epic two CD set, Yellow and Green. Songs such as Little Things, Twinkle, Cocanium, of course this song that uh, has debuted. Now we're here to talk about green. We're here to talk about how green maybe differs from yellow. We're here to talk about where its importance is on this two CD set. Were they able to continue where yellow kind of left off whenever we've last left our heroes in Baroness? Well, beginning with the green theme, you start to understand what the theme of this album is truly going to be, and that's going to be one of a lot of exploration, but also a lot of interesting atmosphere, draped with instrumental post-rock harmony. It's crazy. If you didn't think that the last album, if you didn't think that Yellow, the CD that you probably just finished listening to prior to Undertaking Green, was really taking in that radical direction, where they seem to be making an album rich with atmosphere, rich with harmony, rich with just wonderful exploration, all kind of combining together, this should be the curveball that finally lets it sink into your head. And the fact that Board Up the House, the track that follows it, and the fact that it almost has a positive sounding riff to it, almost like a go tell it on the mountain type style riff, no, Board Up the House does not mean Katrina's coming, don't steal a TV. But it's interesting on how many different sounds this band really undertook, not only on the green but on the entire yellow and green duality. This is an, a, uh, the, the second half of this album is just a wash with this. There's a ton of instrumental segments that borderline on post-rock beauty. There's even one such instrumental track that even seems to have a twinge. A twinge. It's very minute. It is exceptionally minute, and I might just be dreaming this. But I'm okay with dreaming this. And it's weird that I'm okay with dreaming this because it almost sounds like there's just a hint of Americana. A hint of a little bit of country in there. But since it's an instrumental track with just that soft acoustic guitar, it actually is quite lovely. It is quite lovely. It is one of a kind. Wow. Stretch Marker, another fantastic track. Uh, I... This is just absolutely filled with beauty and bliss, interwoven in with the occasional hard-edged moments. Not much can be said regarding this album with the exception of the word dynamic, with the exception of the thought of the yin and yang, with the exception of the idea of duality yet symmetry. The reason why this side of the record does pose a symmetrical glow to it, even though it definitely shouldn't sound that way, is because you feel as though you're getting an equal balance of that instrumental good, uh, goodness and that instrumental creativity and an equal amount of the vocal delivery, the vocal harmonies, and a little you know, snippet of the heaviness in each and every one of those with, uh, uh, I think it's called the line between... Uh, being the real, uh, the, the real epitome, almost like leading and uh, leaving with your hardest foot forward, you know, to try to kick your ass one final time uh, before going into the final instrumental track that closes the album with two minutes and forty-two seconds of just relaxing, soft bliss. I wasn't sure how Baroness was going to be able to follow up Yellow, because Yellow was really a very different, different approach, which is something that they've become quite common for. And I'm going to go out on a limb, even though we're only three albums into their discography. I am going to say that this is a band that doesn't just say that they're going to attempt exploration. They decided to go full out Opeth Heritage on it and do it. And unlike Il Divinium and Sanus by Morbid Angel, and unlike Dedicated to Chaos by Queensryche, this is a band in Baroness, with their album Yellow and Green, where the experiment not only works, but it works to perfection. Now wait, I'm not calling this album a perfect 10. 
In fact, what I'm going to do is first I'm going to blow out this candle to represent that green is in the books. And like yellow, it doesn't want to go very slowly or very quickly. Whatever. This is an album I'm going to have to give a 9.5 out of 10. The reason why, even though I've talked such high praises for it, is that I do believe that there's going to be a commonplace struggle with this album with a lot of people, and I want to discuss this briefly before I sign off, and we put Baroness completely to bed so far this year. And the reason is because I, I think that a lot of traditional metal fans that perhaps liked this band before because they did have a little bit of heaviness to them, they had a lot of that signature crunch to it, the sludge, you know, the, the, the stoner variety of metal we may listen to an album like this where it's experimenting with a lot of softer material. It is really going out on its limb to really incorporate a lot of diversity and really factor in a lot of different inspirations, a lot of different uh, genres of music that they really find to be enjoyable and kind of, you know, sparse them and, uh, you know, jigsaw puzzle them together to create the perfect Power Ranger Megazoid of fucking music. I feel that there's going to be an intense backlash regarding that because I don't know if some people are going to be able to conjure it and understand it. I don't know if they're going to be able to factor it. Uh, they're not going to be able to process it. It's going to be overwhelming to some people. Either that or they're just going to wonder why that signature sludge, that signature raw sound wasn't present and wasn't omnipresent on this record. Why there was such and experimental glow, why it sounds like they had kind of gone a little bit more toward the mainstream, if people even want to go that far. I don't think I want to, but I said it, so I guess I just did. Damn me later. But I'm going to encourage each and every one of you to approach this album with an exceptionally open mind. Progressive metal, progressive rock, and alternative fans stoners of the world and even you sludge hounds are going to adore this record for the simplistic reason that this is an album that is not afraid of itself it's not afraid of the world around it it's bold it's influential it has legendary status stamped upon it the only difference or the only weakness that may that probably did it for me and didn't make it a perfect 10 is the fact that in some slight cases the material comes off as a little little tiny bit weak some people may think that the incorporation of that post rock beauty may be a little bit lazy I don't go that route I love the atmosphere I love the way in which that's incorporated I found that, that uh, the, the line between was kind of a weak track. It was very powerful. It had a lot of heaviness to it. But overall, it was just not quite up to caliber. And I feel that there's a couple of other tracks that kind of fit that protocol as well. But if that's all it's going to be, if I'm truly nitpicking a little bit, you know, in a personal stance in order to not have this be a 10, I mean, that's telling you something. This album, if you're a fan of music that is open-minded, experimental, and influential, very much aware that it is going to be this different, but very much also not caring in the fact that it is this experimental music that's truly done by a band that enjoys what they do and wants to explore, that actually wants to quest around the musical universe and almost take their own form of musical manifest destiny across the nation that is sound, then this album has something to offer you. I implore, I encourage, I recommend this album. Highly. This has something that a lot of people will love. And those that will despise it will do so because they are incapable of appreciation of something of this variety. That may be a bold blanket statement. However, observation has taught me that those who choose to ignorantly hate something do so because they are afraid to not only enjoy it, but to even attempt to enjoy it. Ladies and gentlemen, Baroness has given us truly a gift. For those of you who toke, 
This is an album to smoke to. For those of you who don't, this is an album to study. Those of you who are into philosophy or just like a good story, that like albums that really seem to paint a picture, that build an atmosphere, that really truly puts you within its own horizon, this is an album for you. Fans of pop rock will hate this because it's too heavy. Fans of extreme metal will hate this because it's too soft. Fans of rap will hate it because Lil Wayne's not on it. Fans of country will hate it because it doesn't twang enough. But there is a niche. There's a big niche for a lot of you. I really cannot say enough to explore this record. Hopefully you do. Hopefully you find it to be even just halfway as brilliant as I do. But if you tend to agree with my assessment, then I'm glad that we're able to share that feeling together.